Hello, welcome to Rando Tech Info. So today we're talking about whether or not you need a 5G phone in 2022. Back in November of last year, I did a video titled, Do You Need a 5G Phone in 2021? And while a lot of the information in that video is still relevant, some of it has become a little outdated. So I wanted to create a new video with the most up-to-date information so you, intrepid viewer, can make the most informed decision about purchasing a 5G device as possible. Thank you so much. But before we can figure out whether or not you need a 5G phone in 2022, we first need to talk about the state of 5G. Now I live in the United States, so in this video when I talk about the state of 5G and specific carriers, I will be referring to how things are here in my part of the world. However, if you do live in another corner of the world, you may still find this video to be useful, particularly if you are trying to decide if 5G technology itself is worth your money and an upgrade. So as of right now, there are three different types of 5G, and right now we're going to talk about the good and the not so good of each type. The first type of 5G we're going to talk about is low band or what most folks and most carriers refer to as sub-6 5G. Sub-6 5G is good at covering large areas. A sub-6 5G cell tower can cover up to hundreds of square miles, similar to that of a 4G cell tower. T-Mobile has been prioritizing its sub-6 network for a while now and its sub-6 5G footprint is actually very close to matching its 4G footprint. AT&T's sub-6 footprint doesn't cover as much area as T-Mobile's, but it's respectable and expanding. Verizon, well, they have a ways to go. There is a very good chance that if you live here in the US and you are receiving a 5G signal on your 5G compatible phone, that this is the type of 5G you're getting. Sub-6 5G is also good at penetrating objects, like, for example, the walls of your home. The not so great thing about Sub-6 is that it's not super fast. 5G Sub-6 speeds are often similar to that of 4G speeds, and while most people will see faster speeds with Sub-6, there is a good chance those gains in speed won't amount to anything you will notice in your day-to-day -day life. Next, let's talk about high frequency or what most people refer to as millimeter wave 5G. Millimeter wave 5G is the good stuff. It's the crazy fast high speed 5G that the network carriers want you to believe 5G is all about. If you have seen commercials talking about how fast and life-changing 5G is, millimeter wave 5G is what they were referring to. With millimeter wave 5G, you can see download speeds of over one gigabit per second, which is considerably faster than the internet speeds that most people get in their home. Check this out, 800 megabit per second. The problem with millimeter wave 5G is it has very little coverage. While 4G and sub-6 5G towers can cover hundreds of square miles, a millimeter wave 5G tower can only cover a few hundred feet, or to put it another way, one or two city blocks. This is why heavily populated areas here in the US are the only places you will find millimeter wave 5G. The other problem with millimeter wave 5G is it has trouble passing through objects like other people or trees or walls. It's kind of a problem. Now all three major US carriers do utilize millimeter wave 5G, but its expansion has been a much bigger priority for AT&T and Verizon than T-Mobile, and that is because T-Mobile has spent more of its resources expanding its sub-6 and mid-band 5G networks. We'll talk a little bit more about mid-band 5G in a minute. The last thing you have to understand about millimeter wave 5G is you often need special phones with additional millimeter wave antennas to take advantage of it, and those phones often cost more than their non-millimeter wave compatible counterparts. A perfect example of this is the Pixel 6. If you pick up the Pixel 6 straight from Google, it will cost you $599. If you pick up the Pixel 6 from Verizon, it will cost you $699, and the Verizon version of the phone is the only one that will let you make use of their millimeter wave 5G network. This amounts to a $100 millimeter wave 5G premium, a premium that most people will never or hardly ever use. Finally, let's talk about mid-band 5G. You can think of mid-band 5G as the love child between millimeter wave 5G and sub-6 5G. It has a smaller coverage footprint than sub-6 5G, but it's faster. It's not as fast as millimeter wave 5G, but it covers a lot more area. I actually did an entire video dedicated to the differences in speed between sub-6 and mid-band 5G, so if you want to do a deeper dive on that, I will leave a link to that video down in the description, and if you find all this 5G stuff interesting, you might just want to go ahead and sub to the channel. Might as well. If I had to summarize my findings from that video, I would tell you that mid-band 5G speeds, when available, are typically faster than most 4G and sub-6 5G speeds. Not life-changing, but noticeable. Midband 5G is used in a lot of the world outside the U.S., but here in the U.S., the only carrier currently utilizing midband 5G is T-Mobile. I say currently because the FCC recently auctioned off a lot of new bandwidth 
to all of the U.S. network carriers, and Verizon and AT&T should be getting in on some mid-band 5G action sometime next year. Also, just for your information, if you've ever heard the term C-band 5G being tossed around, just know C-band 5G is a type of mid-band 5G. And while there might be some differences between the carriers when it comes to which mid-band 5G frequencies they are going to use, the overall experience should be similar, at least once AT&T and Verizon's mid-band networks are brought to life and their coverage footprints become significant. So getting back to our original question, do you need a 5G phone in 2022, especially when you factor in that all three of the major network carriers are planning on shutting down their 3G networks next year and more and more network resources are being funneled into 5G speeds and coverage? I would say the answer is no. You still don't need a 5G phone in 2022. At least if your current phone utilizes 4G and is still working properly. If you are happy with your 4G device, there is no reason to pony up money to get a new device in 2022 just to get 5G. Now, if you are already planning to upgrade to a new phone now or next year, and you are the kind of person who only upgrades every two or three years or more, I would probably recommend getting a 5G compatible device and that is for two reasons. The first reason is your coverage will probably be better and faster with 5G. Now, obviously this will largely depend on where you live. So before you pull the trigger, you will probably want to log into your carrier's website and check their coverage map to be sure you will see some benefit. But I think a lot of people at this point will. And the second and probably bigger reason to go ahead and upgrade to a 5G device is they have recently dropped in price quite a bit. You can get an iPhone 13 mini, a 5G flagship phone for $699, and the new Pixel 6 is a flagship quality 5G phone you can pick up for $599. You can go even cheaper and get a phone like the Samsung A52 for $499 or the Pixel 5a for $449. Or you can go even cheaper with phones like the Samsung A32 5G and the OnePlus Nord and 200 5G, which both come in at under $300. And actually, I think you can pick up the Nord right now for under $250. So it is possible to grab a 5G phone today without breaking the bank, something that was a lot more challenging to do just one year ago. Just remember, before you buy any of these phones, or any phone for that matter, to check and make sure that the phone will work on your carrier's 4G and 5G networks. Well, that's all the useful information I have for today. If you own a 5G device, please feel free to share down in the comments your 5G experience so we can all learn from each other and make more informed buying decisions. As always, I do hope you found the video useful. Thanks for watching. And until next time, this is Rando Tech Info signing out.